Today, we're going to talk about alcohol and the cake business. We're going to go through some common newbie mistakes in the industry, as well as talk about some pro tips to help you um, with, within the business if your customer just is just adamant about having alcohol with their cakes. So what inspired the conversation today is that in our free group, we do have a free group on Facebook called the Sweet Success Project. Somebody posted a cake and asked, how much would you charge? Um, and the cake actually had um, little alcohol bottles on it, as well as um, it had a licensed image on the cake as well. So I didn't chime in on the conversation because by the time I got to it, the conversation had pretty much been, um, I didn't want to beat a dead horse and just come back and talk about what had already been said. Um, but I at least wanted to chime in about this because I felt like it was a very good discussion point um, to share with you guys. So like I said, we're going to talk about alcohol and the cake business. I am Sid of the Sugar Queen Academy and of Sweet Fest. So my disclaimer, I am not a lawyer, okay? I'm not a lawyer. Um, I didn't go to law school. I did go to business school. Um, I know a lot about business and the stuff that I know about the law has either been what I learned in business school or what I've studied and researched as well. So just so you know, I am not a lawyer. I'm not giving legal advice. I'm giving you guys business advice based off of my years of experience being in the industry as well as um, my study of the topic at hand. Okay. I also welcome any of you who are in the industry who have been doing this for a while and have your own pro tips and life hacks and all that kind of stuff. Please contribute that to the conversation because I look at this as a discussion uh, for our community to learn from. I don't want it to just be Sid is sitting here giving you guys a lecture. Obviously, I do have some points that I want to share with you, but I also feel like there is tons of insights that other people can contribute to the conversation as well. So if you would like to chime in on a tip that you have, please feel free to chime in in the chat. If you're watching a replay, please also feel free to chime in in the comments as well, because like I said, I want this to be more of a discussion where we can all share ideas and learn from each other. So I know the basic question that people have is, is it illegal to sell alcohol in your cake business, all right? And my comment back to that is, it depends on how you go about it, okay? So I don't wanna just say a flat out, yes, it's illegal, because it depends. If we're talking about selling alcohol bottles, yes, that's illegal. If we're talking about filling pipettes with alcohol and sticking it into cakes and berries and cupcakes, yes, that is illegal. Um, if you do not have a license, okay? So the government agency that is in charge of regulating the sale of alcohol and the distribution of alcohol is called the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive. It's a government agency that actually regulates this whole alcohol thing, okay? Um, now, <clears throat> when it comes to the selling of alcohol, you're gonna need a license. Now, if you wanna go as far as to be able to get a, a liquor license, then that's on you. Definitely look into your state, look into your local government as well. So not just your state, but your city, your county to figure out what you would need to sell alcohol if you want to take it that far. You may not want to take it that far. You may not get enough people who inquire about boozy cakes and sticking bottles on top of cakes or sticking pipettes inside of cakes for it to be worth it for you because it can be kind of costly. It can be in the thousands of dollars in order to get the appropriate licenses. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. So look into that information if that is something, if that's a route that you want to go, okay? Um, but for most folks, you, you may not get enough people inquiring about cakes for it to be worth you to spend $1,000 or several thousands of dollars to get the license, okay? So like I said, it really depends on what we are talking about. If we're talking about you selling straight up alcohol, yes, that is illegal if you do not have a license. However, the whole point of me saying that there's also pro hacks and pro tips and life hacks is that I'm going to explain to you guys some ways that you can get around it uh, when it comes to alcohol and your cake business. OK, so point number one, you can't sell straight alcohol. You can't put it in pipettes. You can't have the little airplane bottles. Um, and it's funny because you see it all over social media. 
And I know that that sends mixed messages because it's obviously up to you as the business owner. We are all adults here. All right. So there's several things that we do within the outside of the bounds of the law. Right. So it's illegal to speed, but we are adults and we can choose whether we want to speed or not. And it's in the same way. This is it could, it's illegal to sell alcohol bottles and pipettes to your customers on top of cakes and cupcakes and treats. But people choose to do it. That is their within their prerogative of <laughs> being willing to break the law or not. All right. So you can decide whether that is something that you want to do or we want to engage in or that's something that you just want to completely avoid altogether. OK, so if you want to use alcohol as an ingredient you can totally do that. If there's like a rum cake or some type of, you know, boozy cake that you want to do, absolutely. You can use it as an ingredient, but it cannot be where a customer can literally like drink straight up alcohol out of your dessert. Okay. So that's the one thing to keep in mind. That's one small hack that you can also keep in mind. If there's a customer who wants a Hennessy cake or a Ciroc cake or a vodka cake or whatever type of margarita cake or whatever, you can add those flavors into the ingredients and you can bake them in as an ingredient to give that flavor. You can also add different extracts to heighten the flavors as well um, in order to get around that. But when it comes to actually sticking just straight up bottles into it, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it today, um, then that's not the way to go because that part is actually illegal. OK, another thing, too, that I wanted to emphasize um, that I found problematic with the post um, that was in the group. Like I said, this whole conversation was inspired by a post that was in the Sweet Success Project, which I'm so glad that she went ahead and posted it because I feel like it was an opportunity for us to all learn something. Um, is that the cake actually had licensed images on it, which was problematic as well, but that actually didn't even come up in the conversation. And yes, it is not legal to have the bottles, but it's also not legal to use trademark images as well. So if a customer comes to you and they say, I want a Hennessy cake, or I want a Crown Royal bottle, you know, I want a, a sculpted Crown Royal bottle or something like that, then you have to watch yourself as well because those type of images are also uh, could be copyrighted or trademarked as well. And so you don't want to infringe on someone else's intellectual property, such as you carve out uh, Jack Daniels cake and then you actually put an edible image of Jack Daniels logo on the cake and then you sell it. Um, that's illegal as well because you're infringing on the copyright. So that's something to keep in mind um, as well. And it's something that a lot of people sometimes don't even think about, um, but that those type of images are copywritten as well and could get you in trouble. It's the same way with like Disney cakes or, um, you know, with Pixar or with Nickelodeon or whatever. Um, if there's a copyrighted image, you can't sell that as well. Some workarounds that you can use um, in this regard is to use alcohol as an ingredient. Also to have your customer provide their own alcohol, um, which they put on after the fact. OK, but I want my little asterisk to that is that I want to make I want you to make sure that you have all the evidence that you need that you did not sell them that alcohol, that that cake did not come with alcohol. So with that being said, put it in your contracts, put it in the forms when you drop off, that somebody signs off that says that they provided their own alcohol, that you did not provide that alcohol, um, have that signature, you know, keep that on file, have those, um, you know, initials and keep all of that on file for your proof. Take photos of when you dropped it off. Look, it did not have pipettes in it when I dropped this off. I didn't provide them the alcohol. They provided it um, after I left. Put all of your ducks in a row, especially when it comes to um, this type of stuff. You know, if they're going to share a picture of the cake, make sure they don't tag you if it has alcohol bottles sticking out of it um, so that you can cover yourself as well. OK, so that's those are two main ways that you can really get around it is by putting it in as an ingredient as well as to provide the alcohol on their own. Look into isomalt. I know the Simi Cakes has an isomalt mold to make what looks like alcohol bottles, but they're actually edible 
bottles. So they're made out of isomalt, which is a sugar replacement. Um, so look into that as more of as an aesthetically pleasing, something that will give them what they wanted it to look like. So you could make replica bottles out of isomalt and use those as toppers on the cake to give the look of what the customer wants, but at the same time, it's not actual alcohol. So look into semi cakes um, for their mold as well as their ice mold. There are other ice mold brands out there that may have molds, but I just know specifically that they have a mold that looks like a airplane, airplane size. So look into those and that may be one route that you can go in order to avoid actually using the bottles. Okay, please let me know if you have any um, questions or anything that you would like for me to go over. Um, I'm actually going to look at my phone to see if there's anything else and maybe I'm just missing the comments. I just wanna make sure um, before I hop off of here so that I can make sure to touch on everything you guys had questions about. Oh yeah, there are comments and they're just not showing up here. Um, that sounds expensive. Yes, Tamara, it actually is expensive because not only do you have to have a license from um, the federal government, but you also have to have a license for your state, maybe um, for other places as well. So um, it's not just the one license and done. It's like there's a process behind it as well. Um, Lachey says the alcohol has to be a certain percentage in the cakes. Your product has to be sent off to be tested. It can't just pour alcohol in the batter and bake. That's absolutely right. And thank you so much for bringing that point up, Lachey. Um, that's something that I forgot to mention as well. It's not like you can just have a cake that's like... <laughs> <laughs> the majority of the flavor is alcohol. So um, definitely that's a really, really good point. Lachey, thank you so much for reminding me of that. Um, Natalie from Picture Perfect Creation says, I normally tell my customers they can add after they pick up on their own time. Exactly, because, uh, you know, this is something that they're doing. Um, they are doing their part on a personal basis. You guys are doing this for commercial reasons. And so far by them providing their own alcohol to their own um, party goers, that's a completely different scenario than you providing them the alcohol. So, yes. Um, Sweetie Cake says, what some bakers don't understand is there are trolls all over social media pretending to be bakers to enter our groups. About two years ago, three bakers I know had their licenses snatched due to this. Exactly right. So, um, you know, sometimes in groups, we get this false sense of security that the only people in there are bakers. Um, you know, there are other government agencies that are very well aware of what we're doing and they will go inside of these groups um, and pay attention to what's going on inside of the groups in order to get people caught up. Um, and it's the same way, um, you know, with licensing issues, they can see that all over your social media pages as well. Disney, um, Pixar and other big brands can see that type of stuff as well. So you definitely want to protect yourself um, against that type of stuff. So that's a really good point. Oh, Lachey says, I have a license and went through the process along with the background check. The feds are on Facebook posing as customers, and I know them personally here where I got my license. They get caught all the time. Exactly, Lachey. So that's a really good point. Lachey brings up a good point. So Dawn Belisle, who I mentioned in the previous, um, the previous session last week, she's actually a lawyer turned baker, and she consults on this type of stuff all the time. She consults on cottage food stuff. So like I said, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> I am not a lawyer. I'm sharing with you guys the high level overview um, for the newbies who just don't know where to start, don't know what's right and what's wrong. One of the biggest newbie mistakes to me is just paying attention to other people on social media and following what other people do on social media. And that can really get you caught up. And that's not just when it comes to alcohol, that's on a lot of things like, um, you know, other things that it may not be legal to sell out of your home as a home-based business. I see a lot of people um, selling certain items out of their home that they're not supposed to, but because they post it on social media, then people feel like, oh, it 
it must be okay to sell it or because this big name person sell supposedly sells this in their business then i must be able to sell it in my business as well not knowing whether they have a commercial kitchen license and they're able to do it that way or not knowing um you know not knowing what's actually right and wrong to do so don't just assume because there are things that we've seen on social media that it's right and okay for you to do in your cake business especially if you're a newbie and especially if you haven't educated yourself or taken a class on um on the the legalities and uh, the rules and regulations behind it. Don't just assume because you saw it on social media, because sometimes people just put on for social media and they may not actually be selling cakes. They may not actually be selling the treats and desserts that are posted on there. And you may be on the other side of the camera thinking, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. I should sell this, that, and other thing. Whereas it's not legal to do. And that person or that, that account may not have ever said that. So you just want to watch yourself, like Lachey said, educate yourself with connecting with Dawn um, and you know doing your own research as well. Veronica says, how can we check how can we check if something is copywritten? Um, generally, there will be like a mark that is on, um, you know, on that brand. You know, there'll be a little R or there'll be like a TM next to it. Also, one thing to consider when it comes to licensed and copywritten stuff, most of the big brands, big logos that you know, they're a no-go. Most of them are already protected. Like you are, we already know that if I wanted to make a cake that had the target dog and had little target red target on it, like the logo, that's, that's copywritten. I mean, it's one of those where I don't want to say you can assume, but you can almost assume that if it's a big brand, it's copywritten. Almost always. If it's a if it's a big character on a TV show, or if it is something that's iconic, more than likely it is copywritten. Now you could go, you know, and you could research it on the um, Patent and Trademark Office. Um, it's also a government agency, but you can look that up online, um, and you could, you know, research it that way if you want to. But most, most likely. Um, if it is a big brand, then it is trademarked. The design may be trademarked or the logo. Um, sometimes even the look of the bottle. Like, for instance, with Jack Daniels, their iconic bottle shape. Um, I'm sure that they have something. They have to have something that protects people against being able to just, you know, I couldn't just up and start <clears throat> an alcohol brand and have my bottle look exactly like that or like Maker's Mark type stuff. Lachey says, if you did not create it, it's NFL, NBA, Disney, LOL, Hennessy, Coach, etc. It's copyright infringement. Exactly. Iconic brands. I mean, e there's iconic brands, iconic logos are, are copyright. I don't even want to say almost always they are going to be copyrighted. Martia's Cake says, I just had this conversation with a potential client. When I stated I don't um, do liquor bottles on cake, she stated everyone does it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'd be like, go find one of those people because I'm not doing it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. Tamara says, you can buy licensed cake decorating images for DecoPack. Um, definitely look into let, look into DecoPack. They do have licensed images out there as well. Um, but, um, you know, be very, be very cautious of, you know, reselling certain things as well when it comes to copywritten images. Just make sure you do your research. Sweetie Cakes, she says, you're correct, Sid. A lot of the cake posts we watch no longer sell cakes as business. They bake for support to their page from us for their endorsements. Exactly. Um, so like I said, one of the biggest newbie mistakes that I see across the board and not just, not just with alcohol, but you know, with just watching certain, you know, big accounts that will do things that no longer actually sell to the public, or maybe they have a commercial kitchen space that they haven't told anybody about. Meanwhile, we are sitting here on the other side of the camera thinking that, oh, they work out of their home or they sell out of their home and maybe they all, maybe they license a kitchen and they have a completely different license. Um, so you just never know. And basically do your research, make sure that you are operating within the laws within your area, within this country, um, you know, to make sure that you are covering yourself. And if you want to, if you do want to go down the road of selling 
uh, alcohol in your business. Make sure you go through the proper channels. Um, you know, connect with a lawyer like Don Belisle, who will be able to give you the insight um, into the proper channels to go down. Um, but like I said, this conversation was more so to give you guys a high level overview. Don't stick any pipettes in cakes. Don't stick any um, alcohol bottles in cakes. Uh, and then in addition to that, I know Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Um, you know, don't put actual bottles of wine in your boxes as well. Don't include that, that you can't sell that. If you don't have a license, you can't have a Valentine's Day box that has chocolate, uh, chocolate covered strawberries and some cookies and cupcakes and then a bottle of wine. No. A bottle of grape juice? Yes. A bottle of sparkling cider? Yes, but a bottle of wine or a bottle of tequila or a bottle of vodka, no, you can't do that. Um, but, you know, if you if you did do something like that for a picture, then this is, again, a pro hack, pro tip, that if you did want to, you know, give the imagery of what people can do on their Valentine's Day with your box, then... If you want to put a bottle in the background and then in the wording, in your promotion, alcohol not included, and then don't sell the alcohol, you know, like you can put it as imagery in the background. I wouldn't put, um, <clears throat> I wouldn't put any labels being able to be shown or anything in the pictures, but I would, you know, if, if you want to set some type of romantic mood, you could even do something like have glasses of champagne with champagne already poured into the glasses in your pictures. That shows that it's romantic, but that's not something where you're showing that you're selling the alcohol. So just be very cautious of the imagery that you give off um, when it comes to your social media and the presentations as well. I think that's I think that's all. I think that's all I got. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I do want to continue to do this um, every week. Uh, hopefully it will be on Mondays. Since yesterday was a holiday, I decided to go ahead and shift it over to today. But the plan is to keep doing these live sessions on Mondays, probably anywhere between 7.30 and 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you're not already following the Sugar Coin Academy's channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you, um, if you enjoyed the tips. Leave a comment so that I know whether you enjoyed it, whether you didn't enjoy it, whether you want more like this. Um, help me out because that will also help me figure out what I should be giving to you guys and sharing with you guys right here on the channel. And it lets YouTube know that the information that I'm sharing with you guys is actual legit information. So if you enjoyed um, just our general discussion today, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. And um, if you didn't watch the new video, because there was a new video that came out on the channel earlier today that gave Instagram business tips. It was a super short video less than three minutes. And I also just started a playlist that is devoted to Instagram for business as well. So, um, you know, I'm really trying to give you guys as much um, content as possible, especially, especially for the newbies that are out there, because I know there's so many people who are brand new to business who are just trying to get started um, and you guys need some help. And so that's what a lot of the videos will be here on the channel. Of course, the Sugar Coin Academy is there to support you guys for the more intermediate and advanced content. And so that's why I want to give a lot of foundational information right here on the page, which is also why we were giving a high level overview on selling cakes um, that have alcohol in it as well. So again, thank you guys so much for joining. Subscribe to the page so that you can stay up to date on new information that comes out on a weekly basis. I post new weekly videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. I have a few really great topics coming up over the next week. Another one on Valentine's Day, marketing tips, and we've got another one on pricing that we haven't discussed as well. So um, a lot of great things coming up. And I'm so excited to be joining you guys here. If you're not already connected with me on Instagram, make sure you connect with Instagram. The, go into the description box. The links are there. It's Sweet Fest on Instagram and Sugar Coin Academy 
on Instagram as well. And most of you I'm already chatting with in my DMs anyway, which I really enjoy. And you guys are helping me out with my stories. And so that's great. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I will see you guys over on Instagram.